Hey guys, so we're going to be looking at transformations and the fundamental identities. So examples of this, I covered one of these and kind of explained the basics in my lessons video. So I'll drop a link to that in the description. Um, okay, so we're just going to do these two examples. I'm, I'm just going to jump right into it. So um, actually, I'll remind you of the fundamental identities first. So I'm just going to flash them on the screen. You can hit pause if you need to write them down or read them over or whatever. But these are what we want to use to perform the following exercises. So write cotangent in terms of sine x. Okay, so I think a lot of times when we think of cotangent, we think of the good old quotient identity, right? So cosine over sine. And I know what you're thinking, okay, it's supposed to all be all in terms of sine, but this gets us like a place to start. So let's just write that out. And when, when you do problems like this, they're, they're a little bit of a process. So I write this out. I've got sine here. So the question is, can I write cosine in terms of sine by using the fundamental identity? So just to kind of flash what we have, is there anything that relates cosine and sine together? And now you might be saying, oh, wait, 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 this one right here, <laughs> right? So sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. So this is an identity that has sine and cosine in it, right? So if I come back to this, so let's see, that was sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. I could solve this for cosine, right? So I'd have cosine squared theta equals one minus sine squared theta. And then cosine theta would equal plus or minus the square root of one minus sine squared theta. Okay, so bada bing, bada boom, right? Now I've got my cosine rewritten in terms of sine. So I can rewrite this as cotangent equals this plus or minus the square root of one minus sine squared x over sine x. And now I have rewritten cotangent exclusively in terms of sine. So you gotta get a little creative when you do this. So what about this other one? So write cosecant in terms of cosine of x. Okay, so cosecant um, is, we, we know it has this reciprocal identity, right? So it's equal to one over sine. So I'm gonna write cosecant of x equals one over sine of x. And so what do you think we should do next? Well, now we probably wanna use the same Pythagorean identity again, right? So I need to write this in terms of cosine. So I got sine here, I can, I can rearrange this again. So without going into um, all the work again, I will just write, you know, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. And then I can, so in the same way, like we did in the other example, I can solve this for sine. So I would get that sine theta equals the square, plus or minus the square root of one minus cosine squared theta. And so then I can substitute that in. So that was using the identity. So now I can rewrite this sine of x as that square root. And then the last thing that you wanna do is you do wanna rationalize. So you're just gonna multiply by that square root. And so then I ultimately get that cosecant of x is gonna be equal to plus or minus the square root of one minus cosine squared x over one minus cosine squared x. And then we are done. And so that brings us to the end of this example video. So if you found that helpful, consider leaving a like for it. And uh, otherwise, thanks for watching guys. I'll catch you in the next video.